The Boko Haram insurgency began in 2009, but it posed a significant threat to the 2015 general election, as the sect occupied 11 local government areas, which covered about 20,000 square miles of Nigeria's territory. However, a counter-offensive operation weakened the group, thus giving room for the conduct of elections in the Northeast. In recent months, the sect has conducted more attacks, especially on military bases, killing soldiers and seizing weapons. According to the December report of the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, more than 7 million people in northeast Nigeria require humanitarian assistance and protection, including 1.8 million internally displaced persons. In the nation's north central, the conflicts between farmers and herders have claimed over 3,000 deaths since 2016, and that's according to Amnesty International. The right body claims that of the 310 attacks recorded between January 2016 and October 2018, 57% were in 2018. What's up? What's up? Although some of the displaced persons have started returning home, a recent survey from the Afrobarometer states that 71% of Nigerians are concerned about the conflicts. The election will also take place against the backdrop of insecurity with violence in the Northeast and Middle Belt and threats from non-state actors that could impact negatively the electoral process. A recent spate of armed banditry in Nigeria's Northwest has seen communities raised and the rise in kidnapping and rape. On July 31, 2018, Amnesty International reported at least 371 deaths and 18,000 displaced persons in Zamfara state. The government has responded by deploying troops to the area. It might be true that we still have some challenges in the policing space as a result of the criminal elements adopting new methods to beat our strategies. The good news, however, is that as they are changing their modus operandi, we are equally changing our strategies to defeat them in the fight. <laughs> The Southeast region has been battling with the activities of the indigenous people of Biafra. The group had threatened to disrupt the Anambra governorship election in November 2017, but did not succeed. This time, the group has renewed calls for supporters to boycott the 2019 general elections, although the region has had a history of low turnout of voters. Well, now we've got Professor Rafai Al-Kali, who is a member of the National Working Committee of the Social Democratic Party. He also joins us from our studios in Abuja. Good morning, Prof, and thank you for joining us today. Hello, how are you? Good morning. Yeah. How is Lagos? Well, we're fine. We're fine here, Prof. Uh, let's focus on the elections now and uh, the kinds of preparations that INEC is putting in place. We do know that uh, some security challenges in uh, some places, but... From your perspective, are you impressed with uh, the preparations that ANEC has put in place so far? Well, as we are aware, uh, elections under normal circumstances are always very difficult and challenging for any organization to handle. And uh, in our country, Nigeria, over the past few years, we've been going through difficult situation and circumstances, uh, but I have the feeling and believe that since I never was able to go through the same process somehow in 2015 when the situation was also bad, I think they have learned the lessons of the elections of that period and therefore make a lot of improvements. Uh, therefore, it is very, very important that nobody should be disenfranchised it's very difficult, it's challenging, because there is a lot of massive demographic movements, especially in uh, high security areas. But I believe over the past few years, they've also perfected their plans, and they should perfect their plans to ensure that nobody is left outside. One of the concerns that uh, is being talked about is the role of security agencies in elections. So from the explanation they're given, I mean, the Electoral Act clearly stipulates what INEC can do, uh, how they can deploy police uh, for the elections, 
the provisions are clearly stipulated there because it also says that uh, uh, INEC has a huge role to play here. What would you like to see for security agencies, the kind of role, where when and I, how? I, I, Go ahead. Mm. Yes, thank, thank you very much. Yes, I think as we are aware, over the under normal circumstances, if everything were stable and stable, um, maybe you don't need a high security presence uh, in terms of uh, handling election matters. Uh, but over the past few years, you know, um, it's very difficult to anticipate what could happen, either from the movement of election materials to securing the uh, polling stations to protecting the voters, uh, protecting the INEC officials, uh, protecting even observers, and the uh, movement of election results to the various coalition centers, and uh, all the other levels. So it becomes essential somehow that security has to be there. Because in the absence of the security, some people can take advantage of the open system and cause havoc. Therefore, insofar as the security are also providing complementary support to the INEC, uh, I think it is, is, is good and it should be done properly. Um, but of course, uh, most people are sometimes worried that if is, the security does not uh, uh, conduct itself or organize itself properly, it instills fear, uh, maybe among the populace on the election day. And uh, maybe even some voters will find it difficult to come out because they are afraid that uh, maybe when they go out, they'll be molested. But I believe. Insofar, there are assurances, and there are always usually assurances during election period that uh, everybody, every voter can come out and go and vote and go back home. And uh, with the result, that's okay, that's good. It should be done. All right, Prof, let's talk about your party now, the SDP. What is your party looking to achieve in these elections? Well, as you are aware, SDP is an old brand, but it's also a new brand. Nigerians know about the Social Democratic Party, particularly what happened in the 1990s. And uh, so far, uh, uh, when you mention SDP, few people ask you who is SDP or what is SDP because they know their brand and know what it stood for. Um, uh, since uh, the beginning of this uh, transition program now, um, our chairman, national chairman, Chief Olufalae, and the entire leadership of the working committee has been working around the clause to ensure that People are, you know, brought back to understand uh, the meaning, the full meaning, the full value of SDP as another political party that offers better opportunities for Nigerians. So SDP is very strong uh, nationwide and is highly respected given the character of the leadership uh, of the party and uh, given also what has happened in the past. Although we are not living in the past, we are also moving ahead. So... Uh, the, it has come out with programs and ideas that are a little away from what used to be the traditional pattern, especially emphasizing on the role of women, uh, the role of youth, and even the disadvantage, so that everybody should be carried out along in the process. All right. Well, we'll, we'll talk about uh, some of those key roles uh, that you just highlighted. Perhaps, uh, uh, well, yeah, let's do it in just a moment when we'll come back. Stay with us. <laughs> 